What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do in today's video is take a look at a different way of thinking about the logarithmic regression curve. And we're going to look at how this type of regression analysis can be far superior to the logarithmic regression curve that we looked at in the last video. So the first thing I wanna talk about is if you guys haven't seen yet, we came out with our website yesterday. We finally released it after working on it for about a year. It's called polaritydigital.io. You can find a link to this in the description below. And I just wanna quickly make an announcement for the people that have been uh, you know, trying it out and uh, kind of testing out some of the features. And this is just a very small thing, a quality of life improvement, but we have added the ability to scroll and zoom and you can pan now, very similar to the way that TradingView reacts. So we just added this today. Um, we were testing it out yesterday and now it's ready to go live. So I just wanted to make that announcement. And with that said, let's hop into the video. Okay, so here we have the standard logarithmic regression curve that we look at. So this is basically a metric that essentially attempts to determine where the price of Bitcoin may be headed to as a function of time. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, in many instances, that can give you a very solid model. In fact, you know, as we've discussed many times here, for Bitcoin over the long run now, it has been a very solid measure of the price of Bitcoin. And, you know, like we said, it's sort of held this lower band of the regression curve. We basically showed in my first video where we talked about this, how you could have created this lower band in the first market cycle, this market cycle that occurred back here in 2011 to 2012 and 2013. And it would still more or less hold very close to where we're at today. What I want to look at today then is a different way to think about this. Okay, so you'll see here that I've added a new line. Now, what this is, is very similar to the logarithmic regression analysis, which is only looking at time. This is looking at other factors. So in this particular model, what I've included are the stock market, I've included a few economic indicators, and I've included the Bitcoin active addresses. So this metric is looking at many different metrics and not just time. So you'll notice that our logarithmic regression curve always looks the same. It's always this upward sloping curve that starts to trail off as time goes on. That's simply a rule of logarithms. So as we go on further and further in time, there's essentially diminishing returns. And what we know about assets is the fact that that's simply, you know, that's not true. They don't necessarily only go up with time. And that's what a log regression curve tells us. You know, as we get to farther points in the future, it becomes less and less useful. And that's where something like a multiple regression really comes in handy, because this is looking at numerous different aspects of the economy, and it's using those to estimate what the price of Bitcoin is. What we did with this particular model is, you know, we included the data up until this 2018 market cycle. So right through the end of 2018 and actually into 2019. So the model basically was not informed of anything that's happening in this market cycle. So we give it the data and we say, hey, what is the correlation between the NASDAQ? What is the correlation between interest rates? What is the correlation between the unemployment rate? What is the correlation between you know the S&P? And specifically related to Bitcoin, what is the correlation with relation to active addresses? So it's looking at all of those factors at once and using them to estimate what the price of Bitcoin could be at any given point in time. And some interesting things start to reveal themselves when we look at this type of data. We're actually able to see that at various times, specifically during the some of these price peaks, we notice that Bitcoin kind of shoots above this estimated price, all right? And we notice that happens here. And where else does it happen? It happens in our 2011 market cycle. It happens in our 2013 and 2014 bull run. But you'll, you'll notice just how far Bitcoin kind of was overextended from where it may have been expected based on the economy, based on the stock market, and based on the on-chain metrics, right? You you see that, you know, at maximum, Bitcoin was estimated to be at around $200. 
And Bitcoin, in fact, got all the way up to around $1,200. And what happened in that case? Well, it came crashing down below and actually came all the way back down to where? Around $200. But at that time, the economy and the stock market were actually looking a bit more favorable. And at that point, the model said that Bitcoin is, in fact, undervalued. And what happened when Bitcoin got to this undervalued level? Well, sure enough, Bitcoin is estimated to be undervalued. We come rallying back up and from that $200 level, that's where we start to move up and eventually break above it. And when does it break above? During one of the greatest mania phases of any asset in recent memory, the Bitcoin mania phase of 2017 into 2018. You'll see that yet again, Bitcoin got excessively overvalued, right? So the model predicted Bitcoin should possibly be valued at most at around uh, 6K. And we got all the way up here to around 19K, all right? So right around here, right around the middle of 2019, we no longer give the model any more data. We're now saying, okay, take the data you have and see if you can estimate where the price of Bitcoin will be at any given time. And a few interesting things happen. So right where we stop feeding it data, it's saying that Bitcoin's a bit overvalued and sure enough, Bitcoin came crashing back down. And you'll notice that right at this point, the model actually very closely predicts where Bitcoin will be. So you'll see that at the COVID capitulation crash, it estimated that Bitcoin should be at around 6,300. And in fact, Bitcoin got all the way down to around 4K, okay? And its lowest close was around 5K. And then as the market started to rally, as the active addresses started to build up, it said, hey, Bitcoin should be moving up in price right now. And this is actually very interesting. It's telling us then that Bitcoin should be rallying right now. Bitcoin is vastly undervalued. You know, Bitcoin, we think that it should be, or the model thinks that it should be at around 30K while it's sitting down here lingering at around 10K. And what happened just a few months later? Well, Bitcoin came rallying hard, got up to 30K, got up to this overvalued level. So the model at this point was saying, hey, 50K, that's probably about as high as we should go. And what happened? Bitcoin got up to around 64K until it crashed back down and has kind of been living in this undervalued to, you know, we'll say undervalued, but realistically, I think the model is doing a rather decent job of predicting where the price should be based on the economic factors and based on the on-chain data. Ever since this most recent cycle has started, really ever since the COVID capitulation event, the model has been predicting the price of Bitcoin rather closely. We've seen the price of Bitcoin move right along with what the model kind of predicts that it should be doing. All the while though, importantly, we've remained undervalued slightly, but it's not wildly undervalued. It's not like the model saying, um, you know, the price of Bitcoin right now is 23K, where the model thinks that it should be 50 or 60K, right? Kind of like we saw back here at the beginning of 2020 after that COVID capitulation event. So I think what that tells us is the price is right now, you know, a lot of people have thought that Bitcoin's getting hammered right now. And it, you know, this is, this is all based on the crypto market. I don't really think this is based on the crypto market. I think this is based, like we've been saying for uh, a year and a half now almost, this is based on the economy. These are economic factors driving Bitcoin. So this is based on economic factors. Economic factors are driving the price of Bitcoin down. In fact, when you look at where the price is right now, the model predicts the price of Bitcoin should be at $23,780. The price of Bitcoin is at right here at around $23,000, okay? So what we're getting at is these wild moves to the downside aren't so much based on people losing faith in crypto. They're just based on what happens in the crypto market when the economy turns south. You know, and when I say the economy, we're talking about numerous metrics here. We're talking about things like the stock market. We're talking about, like I mentioned before, those are all the factors that we're looking at in this model. And this model indicates that we're kind of where we should be. The price is kind of where it should be right now. So, you know, there have been some times where we've been undervalued. 
But one of these times happened. Well, these have been centered around major events. These have been centered around these events that um, the price of crypto had absolutely no chance of reaching these prices. Like uh, the model expected a rally up to around 38K back here in August, but we were surrounded by, you know, the Terra Luna event, the uh, the three, eight, three Arrows Capital events. So you had all these negative events occurring and then eventually, you know, the FTX event. Naturally, the price was not going to be able to uh, reach to its true market value. But now we are kind of at that level. So I think what's important is going to be watching this and watching for this value right here to start to move up. Because if we do start to get above this value, I think it's going to be tough for the price of crypto to just sort of uh, slingshot above it and stay above for a significant amount of time. So without a rally in the stock market, um, you know, a significant rally, I think that will very likely kind of maintain right around where the value of this model predicts probably at it or slightly below it. In fact, if you notice here, each time that we have come up and reached the level of the model, right? So let's just point those out here. You have one right here in March. We have one here in June. We have another one kind of, we got close to it right there in August. And now we're there again, right? We're at it right now. What has happened each time in this downtrend that we have come and touched this model predicted value. Well, we've kind of got rejected off of that level and went down to a new low. Now, I'm not saying that that's gonna happen here, but it's worth considering. In fact, if you even go further back, if you go back to uh, this point right here in November, we barely got above, the model predicted we should be at 70K. Where did we get to? We got to 69K. So ultimately guys, I think you know a model like this provides a lot of utility over a model like a logarithmic regression curve. Now, you might be asking, why is the logarithmic regression curve so popular then? And the reason is, is because it's pretty to look at. And that's the bottom line. That's the reason that people like the logarithmic regression curve. Um, and, you know, it's simple to understand. Here's a line. The price goes up along this line. It's very simple to understand. And so it attracts a lot of attention. So the essentially the logarithmic regression curve is very easy to look at. It's very easy to understand. Whereas a model like this, which is taking into account numerous different factors, isn't as easy to understand. And so people aren't going to uh, gravitate towards something like this, like they are the logarithmic regression curve. Okay, so that's kind of what a metric like this is going to be able to do for you. It's in quite a few ways, it's more robust than a simple log regression curve that only is looking at time as its sole metric for determining where the price of Bitcoin should be. So I'll probably be refining this model over the next few days and I'll likely add it onto the Discord channel. Eventually metrics that we create like this will exclusively get added onto the Polarity Digital channel. For now, if you're interested, you can join the Discord and you can find uh, this metric. I might make this metric for some other assets like Ethereum, for instance. And until next time, as usual, see you.